Hi, and welcome to the Jake Carp Show. And today we're going to talk about the NFL and how they implement their fines on players and coaches. And how ridiculous some of them can be. While I can understand the NFL is doing what they can to try and reduce the injuries they sustain, I don't think these fines are going to make any difference. Just look at the money these guys make to play the game. These fines, these $20,000, $40,000 fines, are just a drop in the hat. First off, a reason why they raise these fines is due to the fact that they're trying to find a way to reduce the head injuries specifically in the league. Well, see, some fines, such as unsportsmanlike conduct or blatant hits, are acceptable. But some are downright stupid. Recently, Steelers safety Ryan Clark, see, it's always the Steelers that get fined. I'm not, I mean, I'm not a huge Steelers fan, but it seems like they always get fined. Well, he was fined $40,000 on a hit on Ravens tight end, Ed Dixon. $40,000! Now, see, I'll agree, because it was a pretty big hit, but I disagree with the fine. Due to the fact that both Dixon and Clark were fine afterwards. Now, between weeks 9 and 10, I know we already passed week 11, but this is the stats from week 9 and 10. The amount of fines from all around the league equaled $142,000. Honestly, most of it came from the Bears-Lions game week 10, because, boy, that brawl was intense. Now, on the topic of the Bears, I want to mention their wide receiver, Earl Bennett. He, last week, he was fined $10,000. And you're probably thinking there, oh, was it a penalty? Was it a blatant hit? No. You want to know why he was fined $10,000? Because he wore orange cleats. Orange cleats. Are you freaking kidding me? It's ridiculous. Now, like I always do, I will read some comments that people send in to me on the NFL and the fines. The first one here is from Corey. Quote, Thank you, Roger Goodell, and the rest of your cronies for making the NFL more about money than actually playing the game. Staff Stafford should have been fined for sure, as well as more for retaliation. But $10,000 over a pair of shoes? Seriously? Well, yeah, I see. I'm, it's serious, Corey. I hear what you're saying. And they did both get fined. They both got fined um, $7,500. Well, actually, Moore got fined $10,000. Stafford, $7,500. Next up, we have Zalt13. Quote, If Goodell could actually make some consistent fines, people would be less pissed. Ray Lewis had the exact hit to Ward as Harrison did to Muhammad Massaqua last year. However, you you know who it is, and he only gets a twenty thousand dollar fine. Harrison gets seventy five thousand for the same exact hit. Simply put, Goodell sucks at life and really needs to get his pansy behind out of the NFL's business until he understands the definition of equality. <laughs> well, quite frankly, uh, I don't know if he sucks at life, but I'm not a huge fan of him as commissioner. He's done some good things, but as we can tell, he's done quite a few bad things. The last one we have here is from Stoltz13. Quote, A year ago, people would argue that these boards about which team was better was based on records, stats, accomplishments. Now people are arguing that the team is better because they get fewer fines. What a strange turn of events. Well, less fines doesn't necessarily mean you're the better team. Steelers get fined all the time, and they're in first place right now. I'll bite tied with the Ravens. Now see, if you want kids to learn how to not hurt each other, enter them into dance lessons. Football is about hard hits and winning. You you take either one of those things away and all you have is an expensive pep rally. These guys know what they're doing. They know the risk of injury. Otherwise, they wouldn't be playing football. The only reason people watch football is to enjoy watching the battle between two teams who downright hate each other. I understand the concern, but this is football. <clears throat> if I want to watch flag football where everyone gets a participant trophy, I will go down to my little league park and watch there. <sighs> so now we're going to have a new segment on Jet Carp Show called Quick Hits. I'm going to do a quick rundown of the top five things I believe the NFL needs to do to restore their credibility. Okay, number five. Imagine there's a drum roll going on when I say this. Number five, forget the present and think about the future. Start with the young boys in high school and college who are learning how to play. Teach them how to tackle while minimizing injuries. 
Number four, give the player some way away. Don't find every single bad hit in the world. Otherwise, the players aren't going to even need salaries. Number three, the players, this is on the players here, they need to be in better condition. If you're a 140-pounder going up a, against a 260-pounder, you're going to get hurt one way or the other. I mean, unless you're really tough like Joe McKnight, you're going to get hurt. But, number two, if you're seriously hurt, don't play. I mean, yeah, people won't think you're tough. They'll think you're stupid. You're putting your health on the line when you go out there. And when you're injured, you're putting more of your health on the line. Just don't do it. And the number one thing the NFL can do to restore credibility is get better equipment. And this is on the league itself. This is not on the players. This is on the teams and the owners. They need better equipment. There was way better helmets out there than the ones that the average player received. 90% of NFL players don't have regularly updated equipment. It's downright disgusting. Now, like I said, these fines, not all of them are unacceptable. But there's got to be a limit on what you can find. I'm tired of seeing on the bottom line on ESPN, this player was fined $7,500. This person was fined $12,000. I don't care. Because most cases, they shouldn't have been fined in the first place. It's basic instincts on the football field that players have. And they lose their minds sometimes. Now, it's true, you're trying to reduce head injuries, but like I said above, there's plenty more ways to do it than trying to give a few bucks away from a player. <sighs> well, as usual, in the comment section below, tell me what you think the NFL should do to reduce injuries. Maybe even add, reduce fines, whatever you think. And I'll try and get back to you. Thank you for listening to the Jake Carp Show. I'll see you later.